All right, welcome you guys to your first video lesson. Hooray! <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to do some example problems with you. The first one that we're going to do is actually going to be dealing with a derived unit. Uh, I just bought a new car not too long ago, and uh, I was proud to say that the mileage that the car got was 30, my pen isn't working, there we go, 32 miles per gallon. But what he didn't know is he's going to take that across the ocean and bring it over to, say, Europe. And <laughs> they don't deal with miles and gallons, they deal with kilometers and liters. So we want to know how many kilometers will he get per liter? Perfect. Well, fortunately, I know a little bit about unit analysis. And so, uh, if I treat this original unit, this miles per gallon unit, as two separate things, that I can actually get 32 miles for every one gallon, I can now go through and deal with and convert the miles and the gallons separately, one at a time through unit analysis. The same way that we dealt with an individual unit as we were doing that in class today. All right, so you got to pick one of the units. It doesn't actually matter which one you start with. So I'll start with miles because it's on the top. We need to get miles into kilometers. So you need to think about what do you know that is going to get you there. So miles is going to go on the bottom because I need to get rid of that. And the only conversion that I happen to know off the top of my head between miles and anything is I know that there's, for every one mile, there's 5,280 feet. My cross-country day is coming back to me here. <laughs> uh, from there, now I've, I guess we've taken care of these crazy miles units that those have canceled out. Now I'm, if I were to stop now, I'd be in feet per gallon not where I want to be. So I'm going to keep going and convert those feet a little more. Mrs. May, anything that you can think of we can go from feet that'll help us? All right, so we need to get to kilometers. I don't know how many feet are in a kilometer. I'm sure you could look it up, but I'm not going to. But I know how many inches are in a foot. Ooh, every one foot has 12 inches, I seem to recall. Great. Ooh, and I know another one. I know a conversion now between inches and centimeters, which is going to come in handy because we're trying to get to a metric unit, having started originally in an English unit. So a conversion between every one English inch to 2.54 metric centimeters you is going to be pretty handy. That was one of their RQP problems? Ooh. Oh my gosh. Okay, moving on. Centimeters. <laughs> hey, now we're in pretty easy because centimeters, we're already in metric. Now, you could go right from centimeters to kilometers, but I'm lazy and I don't want to think about that because I very simply know there's 100 centimeters in a meter, so I like to do that myself. Great. And now that we're in meters, I can say every thousand meters is going to be one kilometer. Yay! Look at that. We're halfway there. We came up with our kilometers units. If we go through and cancel out all of the units that we have on both the top and the bottom, our distance unit is now just kilometers. So we've got kilometers per gallon right now. So now we need to get rid of gallons. Oh, we're going to just continue this, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> we didn't leave that room. I don't know. We might be able to squeeze you that sucker in. All I right. Think well, okay, Mr. Woods thinks we can write All right. small. All right. So now, the only conversion that I happen to know between the English to metric volume unit is that there are 1.06 quarts in every one liter. Which is pretty good because I didn't even know that. <laughs> <laughs> so all I have to do is get from gallons to quarts, and then I can actually use that conversion that I know. And these are, you know, these guys know the English system. They grew up with it. <laughs> I hope you sure. know how many quarts are in the gallon. All right, so gallons has to go on the top here because we are trying to cancel out gallons on the bottom. So I know that one gallon is four quarts. Is that right, Mr. Woods? That is correct. Oh, good. That's I got it right. That's why it's called a quart, like a quarter. Oh, gallon. see, we're all pretty, learning something today. Just to point out again, Mrs. May decided to put the gallon. Oops, scroll back. Oh, again. I'm so sorry. sorry. She put the gallons on the top this time, the unit that we were starting with, because our original gallons was on the bottom. So in order to cancel that out, the new gallons has to go on the top. Four quarts on the bottom. And now I can use my conversion that I know every one quart is, no, sorry, that's not true. Every... 1.06 quarts is one liter. Whoops. All right, so we're in now we're in kilometers per liter. Except we want oh that's
that's what we want. Hey, we're done. <laughs> but now you got to plug it into your calculator, which we will do, but you should do with us. Anything on the top, you're going to multiply by. Anything on the bottom, you're going to divide by. So put in your calculator. We're going to do it, too. Let's see if your answer matches ours. We can race. Let's see if Mr. Woods' <laughs> answer and my answer even match each other. That will be more fun. I got 13 point. Uh, oh, how little. many significant figures? Shucks. My calculator says this, Mr. So, Woods. 13.647, but whenever we convert from one unit to another, we always have to go back to the original measurement, which in this case was 32 miles per gallon. The final answer always needs to match the same number of sig figs as the original measurement. So, with two sig figs and 32, I've got to round this answer to just 14 kilometers per liter. Remember that, as we learned in class, the conversions that we've used, this 5,280 feet is one mile, the 12 inches equals one foot, the 2.54 centimeters in an inch, we never let those conversions limit the number of sig figs in our final answer. All right. Yay. We did a good job. That was fun. All right. That was example one. We're going to do another example Let's do one with more. you. All right. So I think... Mr. Woods, milliliter is this one? Yeah, All let's right. do a volume conversion. We'll, we'll call it example two for you. Keep nice, neat notes. Good job. All right, so let's say that we have, I don't know, I'm going to make up a number here, 16.54 uh, milliliters. Ooh, and wouldn't it be nice to know what that was in another volume unit, like, say, kilometers cubed. Oh, that's a good volume. <laughs> I like it. So let's figure that out. That changes things a little. It does. Same thing. We're going to go through and start with our original measurement. Draw our unit analysis boxes to get ourselves started here. Now, what I need is a conversion between this milliliters and ultimately a, a cubic distance, right? Uh, do we know one, Mrs. May? Well, I happen to know one, which now I expect you guys should also know that a milliliter, and you guys should have an idea of how big a milliliter is. You looked at a graduated cylinder. It's tiny, but it is the same thing as a cubic centimeter. One little cubic square, cubic square, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> one little cubic centimeter is the same as a milliliter. So, Ooh, so I can do this then. Every one milliliter then is one centimeter cubed. Well, now I, I see centimeters and I see kilometers. I know how to deal with those. I know that there is for every 100 centimeters, there's one meter. That's true, but is I, that going to cancel out? I think that this centimeter can only cancel out one of those cubic centimeters. Well, then I might have to do it again. So I could say there's another 100 centimeters in one meter. And then I could do it again and say there's another 100 centimeters in one meter. Wow, this is annoying. Am I going to have to write this three times every time I want to convert a cubic unit, like say centimeters cubed? Now let's write it out. I'm going to write it a different way. I'm just recopying. But if you know there's 100 centimeters in one meter, you could just write this. Ooh. So all I do then is I take that cube and I just cube the unit, right, Mrs. May? No way, Mr. Woods. You got to cube the number and the unit. So it's oh. one cubed, well, of course it's one meter cubed, and this is a hundred cubed centimeter cubed. So that's why it works out to be the same thing as the work that I did up here, where on the bottom I took a hundred times a hundred times a hundred. Exactly right. Love it. All right. Too, mu too messy for me over there. I got to <laughs> fix that up. Okay. All right, so now we're in cubic oh, cubic meters, and we need cubic kilometers. Oh, well, I know a conversion again between meters and kilometers. There are a thousand meters in every one kilometer, and as you just taught me, then I can just take both those units and the conversion number and cube that, right? Right. Awesome. All right, but here's the key thing, Mr. Woods. When you guys, when we're calculating this out, once again, you got to remember to cube the number on the bottom and any number on the top as well. we got to not forget to do that. But it's not just the unit, it's also the number. That's but if we look at it right now, our units have all canceled with the exception of cubic kilometers. So now Mr. Woods is getting a head start on that calculator. <laughs> better. we got to hurry up. You put it in your calculator because I'll tell you right now, it's really easy to make mistakes when you're putting those cubes on there. So try it with us. Pause it if you need to. All right, 
Mr. Woods and I have confirmed we got the same answer, so we're feeling pretty good about ourselves. So, Mr. Woods? I got one point. Ooh. How many digits am I going to need in my final answer, Mrs. May? Well, I look back here at the beginning, and it looks like... It looks like my highlighter is not all there yeah, because we can't work at the same. <laughs> Sorry about that. So we have four significant figures in our original, so we need to have four significant figures again. Awesome. So I need 1.654 times. It's a crazy number. 10 to the negative 14th kilometers cubed. And of course, this is a great time to look and say, does that make sense? Why is my number so incredibly little? But if you think about the problem, we're going to have little tiny milliliters. And we're trying to compare that to an enormous volume in, in kilometers cubed. Imagine how far a kilometer is. Now cube that. All right. Cool. Are we, are we done? I think we are. That was fun. All right.